Germany unveils measures to tackle far-right surge. Yeah, the, the Germans enacting uh, measures to tackle extremists. That, uh, I'm sure we've been here before. It's on the tip of my tongue. I'm sure that once upon a time, after an election, uh, the Germans pushed through an act which allowed them to basically do whatever they like without the involvement of the Reichstag, effectively giving them dictatorial powers. Surely history wouldn't repeat itself, would it? That never happens. Okay, Germans going mental and barnstorming across Europe, that would definitely never happen twice <laughs> in less than 50 years definitely never happen very confident i'm sure this is just aimed at a tiny tiny fringe of crazy people not you know 10 million germans voting in a way that the authoritarian psychopaths that rule the world don't like let's have a read shall we the German government has announced a package of legal measures aimed at fighting right-wing extremism. I've made this point very many times, but um, do you think, I mean, let's just, I'll just put this out there. Let's say right-wing extremism rose in the United Kingdom, for example, and we isolated two possible reasons for it. Reason number one, a bloke, let's call him Tony Romo. A working class, not particularly eloquent or likeable or charismatic or charming, just a normal Working class lad with the initials Tango Romeo, um, he starts saying things not very eloquently in public. Do you think that would make everybody far right? Or option two, hundreds of thousands, nay millions of unvetted fighting age men from nations that have absolutely nothing to do with the UK, uh, sorry, Germany, <laughs> let's pick Germany for this example, are invited in by a little fat pot-bellied dwarf who thinks standing with your hands like this all the time casts some sort of spell and everybody loves you. Uh, and because the BBC and The Guardian and the mainstream media tell everybody that the little pot-bellied dwarf is likeable and, char and charismatic and charming, when she does something crazy, like collapses the borders of Europe, invites in 10 million hairy ass geezers and then tells everybody else in Europe they all have to join in on the insanity and house and clothe and feed them all. Maybe some members of the general public get a little bit annoyed when, I don't know, they've got to get a bus down the town and they see four or five of them blokes slapping young women's ass cheeks, spitting in old ladies' faces and generally acting like a bunch of knobheads in public. Which of those two scenarios do you think would cause the rise of the far right? Any idea? Normal bloke talking or Collapsing the borders and inviting 10 million men in. Which of those two things do you think sways public opinion the most? Any ideas? It comes after weeks of mass demonstrations against the far right swept through German towns and cities. Throughout January, hundreds of thousands of people from all walks of German life took to the streets to protest against far right extremism. Oh, they've definitely got a mandate then. If hundreds of thousands of brainwashed woke students went on a walk through the streets for a bit, they've definitely got a mandate. Because there's hundreds of thousands of them. And the group that they're all slagging off, like the AFD, they're a tiny fringe group. Look, I can prove it. Story from October 7th on NPR. Germany's far-right party now polls higher than the three parties in government. <laughs> what? Oh no, sorry. Uh, it must have been a different story I was looking for. I was looking for the story that made a logical conclusion that when a few hundred thousand brain-dead students have a protest... Therefore, the government has a mandate to crush the 15 million people that support the AFD. I mean, it's reasonable, isn't it? And the Germans would never grind the people beneath their iron-shod boots whilst barnstorming across Europe, would they? They'd never do anything like that. And they'd never vote for a deranged, one-bollocked midget with a stupid toothbrush moustache and a penchant for replacing the plumbing in his house with Cyclone B. Interior Minister Jan Nancy Faser said the protests had been an encouragement and a mandate. <laughs> and now they have a 13-point plan to fight extremism. And by extremism, they mean anybody that a couple of hundred thousand woke students don't agree with. There you go. It's a mandate and an encouragement. 200,000 students versus 15 or 20 million German taxpaying voters 
who've paid the taxes for 30 years, read books, and are actually and actually have their eyes and their ears open. <laughs> so they've got a mandate for a minority group to crush the rights of everybody else. How very German. You know, people like me that lean conservative, it's nice to know that at least in some aspects, things really are the same as they were a hundred years ago. What a nice story. But let me know what you think. If that doesn't perk you up, if that doesn't tickle you pink, please let me know in the comments. And I want to know why you're against progress. If 20,000 lefty students hasn't given the government a mandate to throat punch 20 million pensioners, I, I want to know why you think that's not logical. Because it makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> all right, thanks for listening. See you all very soon. Toodle pip. Mm-hmm.